Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and today we're going to be adding some very simple, easy details to our stamps. This is part of a release for Reverse Confetti, it's November 2018. I've got this Forever Friends stamp set and the Christmas Circles stamp set and they're coordinating dies. And I'm going to make a Christmas card, even though this is a birthday stamp set, the Pussycat one. <laughs> it's, I thought I'd make a really sweet Christmas card. Alright, I've started by stamping out my images and the first detail that I'm going to be adding is some stripes to the mat that I'm going to sit the box on. And now this, I could have, I did think about getting out a Copic multi-liner and drawing some nice straight lines on with a ruler, but I thought it would be nice just to kind of make it a little bit more loose <laughs> and I just eyeballed it and I've chosen three different colors of green and I'm drawing some really light stripes across the mat and this doesn't have to be perfect the box is going to sit on top it's just going to give a little bit of interest compared to coloring it in just one color right so now I'm going to color my little kitten and if you know me you know that I adore my cats I've got two cats that rule our house they don't get along they're both rescue cats and they tolerate each other so allegedly as long as they're not killing each other then they they're kind of happy <laughs> is what I hear but they I think they'd be lost without each other because they do keep each other company oh anyway the image that I'm coloring I'm coloring sort of a tabby color which is like one of my rescue cats her name's Mags or Maggie it's actually short for Bobby McGee who she's a bobcat and you might have seen her on my videos before she's a funny wee thing so anyway I've what I like to do with my Copics is come in and sort of add where my shadows are going to be first now you might notice that I'm coming in and I'm adding some more shadows and that's how I like to do it. I don't like to add too much too quick because it's easier to add more then try and take it away so I'm finding this is on the Nina 80 pound cardstock and I'm still not a hundred percent used to using the Nina with my Copics and I find that compared to the other cardstock that I used to use it does have a tendency to bleed outside the lines a little especially when I do add a lot of alcohol ink but I do like that the cardstock is matchy matchy and that's like the I wouldn't like to use the card base in the Nina like the one ten pound and then come along and use the other cardstock that I've got to color on so I'm it's up to me to get used to it and I am and I do love it it's a beautiful white cardstock and it's and I like that it's the 80 pound and the 110 pound because that gives me so many more options. Right, so the second way that I'm going to add some details is uh, by using my Copic multi-liner. Now what I like to do here is actually look at the the thickness of the lines from the stamp and try and match it with the multi-liner. So I've actually got the 0.3 millimeter one here but I also have a 0.1 and a 0.5 and because you know how some of the stamp images have a lot solider is that a word <laughs> outlines uh, gives you choices now I just colored all of these dots that I created with uh, one red rather than try and shade it and make it perfect I did really simple copy coloring today because I wanted to do all this in real time coloring I've had a quite a few requests lately to do some real time coloring so I am trying to keep it simple and make it so that you think you can repeat it <laughs> does that make sense that's not repeat repeat isn't the word copy emulate so that you can emulate it so what I like to do if I don't want to do my shading with 
you know, say I've, I want it to come in with lots of different red colors. A um, really simple way to get around this is just to use my grays and it's the tees that I really like to use. The, that toner gray is a real good compromise. If you don't have any grays in Copics then you're really missing out. I highly recommend um, the toner grays and also the warm grays. The, I haven't really gone, I have some cool grays, I rarely use them but the warm greys and the toner greys you can pretty much use for everything. And I just come in with my toner greys and add my shadows with that. So rather than try and come in with three different colours of red in those tiny dots and make it look shadowy, um, that's a really easy option. So now I did have to stamp my sentiment out a couple of times. This is one of the new Christmas circles. I used the Abyss ink, but it's a brand new stamp and it's a really solid image. And I think for the first time it actually stamped really, really well. So the second stamp worked perfectly. Now I've die cut everything with the coordinating dies and I'm just adding some tape runner. Can you see that really old, like I can't remember what they're called, that tape. I found it in my drawer. So I'm trying to use up all my old adhesives before they're no good. <laughs> so I've got my tape runner and I'm using my... It's not even foam dots, are they? That's an old adhesive too that I'm using up. And now here's me trying to work out. Sentiment on an angle. Sentiment straight. Sentiment on an angle. And I have edited this. So please tell me, do you think I should have kept the sentiment on an angle or straight? Which is what I finally did. So thanks so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please like it. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and head to my blog for all the details. The link is below and I'll see you here real soon. Till then, happy paper crafting. Bye.